fierce winter storm in Colorado, but somehow the metro is spared. It won't blow you away. Blizzard conditions force road closures, stranding truckers across the eastern plains. I've been stuck here since yesterday. For me, the wind is the issue because I have an empty trailer. And the high country is measuring snow in feet. I'm tracking snow totals, which still may accumulate to several more inches just northeast of Denver. The storm causing hundreds of delays and cancellations at DIA. We have seen some delays today due to the, the storm, mainly due to wind, actually. We're keeping an eye on conditions with team coverage on this weather action day. Now, don't we? The sound of blizzard conditions out on the eastern plains today. There were whiteout conditions from Elbert County north to Fort Lupton and east to the Kansas border. So here's a look at all that blowing snow earlier today in Haxon, just east of Sterling. Winds gusting to 60 miles per hour. The high winds creating dangerous driving conditions. I-70 opened up just about an hour ago from Watkins to Lyman. All other roads are closed in northeastern Colorado. And this is what it looks like along I-70. This is just a few miles east of Lyman. The snow causing problems in the high country as well. On the left, well, that's what it looks like near Vail. So we have team coverage for you today at 6. Let's start with Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson, who is tracking when this storm will move out of Colorado. Mike? It's going to take a while to get out of the state, but it's not going to do too much to the front range I-25 corridor. There's some flurries up around Boulder, Longmont, up toward Loveland, but we largely miss the snow, and the reason for that is the winds around this storm came from the northwest. That's down sloping off the mountains into the metro. That tends to dry out the air. Farther to the east, closer to the center of the low pressure system, which is now up near North Platte. They had enough energy in that storm to bring the strong winds and the snow. And the mountains, of course, can easily scrape out snow out of pretty much any weather situation. So winter storm warnings continue in the mountains. Avalanche warnings continue in the northern mountains. Winter weather advisories the central mountains. And a blizzard warning remains in effect, not only from Colorado, but all the way to southern Canada with this storm. Behind it come the strong winds currently sustained at 33 miles per hour at Sterling, 28 at Greeley. Temperatures are very cold, 15 degrees currently up in the northeast corner of the state. And you combine that with the wind, it feels like six below zero on exposed skin. All right, thank you, Mike. So roads are closed in northeast Colorado because of all this. And our crews were near Wiggins this morning. Look at that, those wide out conditions they were facing. Uh, we sent Denver 7's Patrick Perez to the Eastern Plains. He joins us live from Hudson, right where I-76 is closed heading east. Patrick? Yeah, Anna, that closure has remained in place for hours. This morning, we were really hoping to make it to Wiggins, which is why we hopped on I-76, only to find out it was closed. So then we took Highway 52, but then we had to turn back around. Here's why. This is what those conditions were like on Highway 52 just before noon today. You can see those strong gusts of wind blowing snow everywhere, making it hard to see. This was between Keensburg and Hoyt. We ended up turning around and headed back to Hudson to play it safe. Conditions at that point had deteriorated. Now, we weren't the only ones whose travel plans were impacted today. We caught up with several truck drivers at the Loves gas station in Hudson. They told me the blizzard conditions and road closures aren't just an inconvenience. It also affects their livelihood. I've been stuck here since yesterday, but there's guys been here for two days, so you're not making any money. I would way rather be parked up than be stuck in, you know, six hour traffic or even worse in some sort of collision because uh, a lot of times on the road you see trucks tipped over, uh, fatalities and accidents that you really don't want to be in. So like I said earlier, all these hours later, I-70 East here from Hudson is still closed, as is eastbound Highway 52 uh, heading toward Wiggins. So if you're trying to get on either one of these roads, you're not going to have any luck. A big question tonight that we've been asking is when are these going, when are these roads, I should say, going to reopen? No indication yet that they'll open anytime soon, but hopefully we'll get a better answer tonight. But it sounds like these truckers, especially the ones at that gas station that we interviewed, they may have to stay here for one more night. And safe and warm, we all hope. All right, take care. Thank you, Patrick. And the winter storm also causing some travel problems at DIA. The airport has seen hundreds of delays today and more than 100 cancellations so far. Denver 7's Daniel Kreuter uh, live at the airport. And Daniel, we could see more delays and cancellations as the storm moves east and impacts other airports. 
Yeah, exactly. Even earlier tonight, the FAA released an alert saying that any inbound flights coming into DIA just expect for those to be delayed about 42 minutes. Now, depending on where you're traveling, if you're heading out of DIA inside, not a lot of headaches here, at least not security. Pretty short line for a Tuesday night and things are moving pretty smoothly. Now, even though there wasn't a lot of snow that fell here at the airport, officials tell me it was practically nonstop for their de-icing crews. The cold temperatures and all of that wind, those were the biggest problems. But now with the storm moving on to other parts of the country, there's issues with inbound flights. We talked to travelers who said they made sure to get to the airport early. We left out early enough so that we could, you know, beat any weather conditions, any traffic, because we weren't sure how the airport would be here. With weather, I just really wanted to just be here and not have to deal with any kind of thing that might might pop up. Luckily, I'm not taking any flights that have to stop off anywhere in the middle of the country with this weather. Now, while we've been at the airport this evening, we even heard one announcement saying that because of the icy conditions outside, baggage was delayed getting off the plane and then into the building. So let's just call this a little look ahead at what's likely to come during a busy holiday travel season this winter. Reporting live at DIA, I'm Danielle Croyder, Denver 7. Danielle, thank you very much for that. It's certainly windy and snowy out in Elbert County. We stopped in Elizabeth and talked to a store owner who is not going to let this snow stop her from getting ready for people who want to run errands or do their Christmas shopping. You want to be well stocked and ready for your customers so they can come in and enjoy and shop and not have to go into the city if they don't want to. Um, they can enjoy the small town feel out here. And the high country is loving all this recent snow. Purgatory says it got eight inches of snow in the past 24 hours, allowing the resort to open new terrain and lifts this weekend. And people were waiting in line to ski at Steamboat this morning. That storm dropped more than a foot of snow at the resort. And Steamboat is one of the resorts that you can get to this year using CDOT's Snow Stang service. It launches on Saturday and the service offers rides from Denver to four other resorts. It costs up to $40 for a round trip ticket depending on which resort you go to. And Denver 7 will be tracking this storm as it moves out of Colorado. You can get 24 7 Colorado weather updates and live radar on your TV. Just download the free Denver 7 Plus app on your favorite streaming device.